In this video, I want to show you some tricks for using the designer frames embossing folders from Stampin' Up. Here's one of the cards I made using this rectangular frame. If you have a piece of cardstock that is smaller than the edges of the frame, then you can just run it through the big shot as you would any embossing folder and it'll turn out just fine. But if your cardstock is larger than the folder itself, then when you run it through the big shot, you're going to get creases here. So there's a trick that you need to learn in order to use this embossing folder with a piece of cardstock that's larger than the folder itself. I've shown you how to use a cardboard shim in the double embossing technique that you'll find on the Mad Stamper YouTube channel. The reason that we use a shim is that when your cardstock is in the folder and you use a shim on top of it, the only area that's going to get pressure when it goes through the big shot is the area where the shim is. So let me show you how this works. When you use a shim, this is actually replacing one of the cutting pads. So when you make your shim, you want it to be about an eighth of an inch thick, which is about the thickness of the cutting pad. And you're going to leave the bottom cutting pad off. Now I like to use some dotto on the back of my cardstock to hold it into place in the folder so that it doesn't shift when I run it through the big shot. And if you want to know how I know how to do that, it's because I've ruined a few pieces that way. So I start my sandwich. I'm using tab one. I've got my cardstock in place. And I have this shim that I made that's two and a half inches by three inches that covers the entire design of this frame. And I dotto that on top of the, the embossing folder. Then I put a cutting pad on top of that and run it through the big shot. Now, this shim happens to be a little shy of an eighth of an inch so I'm not going to feel a lot of resistance when it goes through but that's actually preferable with this folder because with a lot of pressure it'll buckle the cardstock and so a really light touch works best so there's the frame in the corner of my cardstock just like on this card. And on the card I just uh, sponged it lightly so that it would accentuate the design of the frame. Next I want to show you how I made this medallion. I'm going to use the oval designer frame and I'm going to use the same shim that I used on the rectangular one. I've cut this oval with the oval die using the medium sized here and now I'm going to emboss it with the frame. So once again I'm going to dotto the wrong side to the embossing folder. First I'm going to position it against the top side very carefully so I get those little dots around the edges of the oval as precisely as I can inside the design. Then I close the folder and press so that the dotto will hold the cardstock in place. Once again I'm going to build my sandwich with the folder and cardstock inside. Then I'm going to use my shim on top of that and my cutting pad. And as you recall there's no cutting pad underneath the embossing folder. And I'm going to run that through. And there's my embossed oval. And I just have to lift carefully to get the dotto to let go. Now I want to use the vintage wallpaper 
folder to get this design on the inside of the oval. So I make sure I have enough dotto on the back and then I'm going to position the oval so that the vintage design centers nicely in that oval. I've made sure that the embossed side of the designer oval is against the side of the folder that has the Stampin' Up! and Sizzix designs on it. And once I have that in place, I press against the folder so that the dotto will hold the cardstock in place. And I build my sandwich the same way, only this time instead of the rectangular shim, I've made an oval one using the small oval of the oval die because that will fit pretty much right inside. So I place that carefully right in the center and dotto it to the outside of the folder, add the cutting pad, and run that through the big shot. And there it is. I like to do a little bit of sponging just to accentuate the design. Another way that I've used this designer frame and the, and combined it with the vintage wallpaper embossing folder is to layer it like this. And what I've done here is I've cut a an oval from the large oval of the oval's die. And I'm going to emboss it with the oval frame. I used a dotto on the back to position it so it won't shift and then I carefully center the design in that oval and when I've got it where I want I just close the folder press down so that that dotto will hold it in place. Now because this piece of cardstock is smaller than the embossing folder I don't need a shim on it and I'm going to make my regular sandwich with a cutting plate, the folder, and a second cutting plate, and I'll run that through the big shot. And if I have trouble getting that dotto to let go once it's been squished so much, I take a really thin um, ruler and loosen, loosen it up a little and it comes right off. Then I have already run some whisper uh, some very vanilla through the vintage wallpaper embossing folder and I'm going to use this extra large oval punch center my design in the punch and punch it out. I'm going to use some early espresso to sponge the design in order to accentuate it a bit. And I'm going to do the same with the vintage wallpaper piece. And then I just used some dimensionals to layer those together. And there's the card. So those are some ideas for you about how to use the designer frames embossing folders and I hope you have a good time playing with them in your studio and come up with some awesome projects for yourself. Happy stamping!